Good morning, Overflow Church. Brenda Baylog here. I am in Texas as I greet you this morning. And so um, I'm here. There are longhorns in the background. There's dogs walking around, um, cicadas screaming everywhere. So if you hear those, um, I apologize. We are in Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 10 this morning. Um, this is what it says. It says, while Apollos was ministering in Corinth, Paul traveled on through the regions of Turkey until he arrived in Ephesus, where he found a group of 12 followers of Jesus. The first thing he asked them was, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? No, they replied. We haven't even heard of the Holy Spirit. Paul asked, then what was the meaning of your baptism? They responded, it meant that we would follow John's teaching. Paul said John's baptism was for those who were turning from their sins, and he taught you to believe in and follow the one who was coming after him, Jesus, the anointed one. When they understood this, they were baptized into the authority of Jesus, the anointed one. And when Paul laid his hands on each of the twelve, the Holy Spirit manifested, and they immediately spoke in tongues and prophesied. For three months, Paul taught openly and fierce, fearlessly in the synagogue, arguing persuasively for them to enter into God's kingdom realm. But some of them hardened their hearts and stubbornly refused to believe. When they spoke evil of the way in front of the congregation, Paul withdrew from them and he took the believers with him. Every day for over two years, he taught them in the lecture hall of Tyrannus, which resulted in everyone living in the province of Asia, Jews and non-Jews, hearing the prophetic word of the Lord. The activation I see in this this morning um, is that Paul's question to them was not about how they were baptized. It was if um, they had received the Holy Spirit and they said, we don't know of a Holy Spirit. And it was then that I believe that their faith um, was there. And as Paul um, laid hands on them and they believed and in faith they received the Holy Spirit. And so y'all, um, I am very aware that there are debates over all kinds of denominations and all kinds of um, years of study and all that stuff that would argue these points. So I am not um, going to get in that. Please read up on that. Um, ask your pastors, <laughs> um, all that kind of stuff. But it was, this is kind of what I was thinking on that is Paul was asking them, um, basically, do you live your life aware and open to and filled by and guided by the Holy Spirit? Um, that's for you. Are you living that way? It's not the salvation issue of did you accept Jesus as your Savior? Um, and it isn't what did the Holy Spirit do for you one day back then. And it isn't what did Jesus do for you one day when you got saved. But I think the evidence of the Spirit in our lives and the baptism of the Spirit is um, where are we currently? What are we currently doing? Um, what is requiring faith? And um, what is our standing in that right now? This isn't a thing that said one day back then. Um, this is the evidence is in how we are currently living. So where are you currently living? What are you currently doing that requires the guidance of the Holy Spirit? What are you doing um, that isn't done on your own strength? that isn't done um, just in what you know in your head and what you know in your heart, but the belief of the Holy Spirit guiding you and leading you. Um, I'm out here in Texas, like I said, um, we're at a cousin camp this week, uh, 14 grandkids, and we're here and we're doing a VBS type Bible study thing. And, and y'all, the things that we have said about there is no junior Holy Spirit, um, that these kids, these 13, 14 grandkids, um, are walking proof that if the God puts something on their heart and they speak it, um, it changes things. And so when a seven-year-old feels impressed upon their heart um, to apologize or when um, an 11-year-old goes and encourages somebody and that's not their normal bent, it's outside of their personality to um, approach and to encourage, um, but we know that it was put on their heart by the Holy Spirit, um, that is sweet fruit. It's really cool to watch. It's really cool to experience. It's awesome to be on the receiving end of that. Um, but one of my favorite things about being a Christian is knowing that I have the Holy Spirit that will guide me to do things um, 
that bear fruit. And it's not of myself, it's not of my personality, it's not of um, just my own bent, it's of obedience and faith in the one who leads and guides me. Um, I also am reminded of a verse in Ephesians, um, and I don't remember exactly where it is at this moment, but it, it says, um, by being filled with the Spirit, and it's, it means be being filled. It's a constant filling. It isn't that you're one time filled and you walk in that. It's the constant filling that is what then overflows. Um, so that's my activation question for you today is um, how are you walking in the Spirit? What are you currently uh, doing that requires faith that is outside of your own self? Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.